The scientists over at Georgia Tech University just announced the world's first a 3D printed rectifying, rectifying, rectifying hit. This is going where? Welcome to TBDK from the GoGo -Go Joe Show. This is the podcast where I, Joe, round up the best science, business, technology, and startup news because let's face it, we're all super busy and we can't know everything. So I find the 10 best stories from the week in those categories and bring them to you in bite-sized bits with my commentary. And this week we got 10 stories we're going to go over starting with number one, the new pictures from the event horizon telescope of black holes. Next up brains, uh, brains, <laughs> nanobots that uh, burrow into our brain past the brain uh, spinal fluid barrier. Uh, we got airlifting rhinos and drone deliveries. The air is never going to be the same. Robinhood's new IPO allows its users to partake in the fun. We got sperm numbers on the decline. Guys, be careful. The James Webb Telescope is launching soon. We're going to talk about it. Boston Dynamics, the robot company, has a new robot called Stretch. We got some AR fun from Snapchat and Niantic. That's the guys who made Pokemon Go. We got cows wearing VR glasses. And finally, we're going to dive into some really cool energy harvesting technology that allows us to, with it the size of something that's a credit card, with something that is the size of a credit card. Wow, can't talk. Holy shit. Uh, with something that is the size of a credit card, we can harvest energy from 5G network towers. It's pretty incredible. All that and more on today's TBDK. Thanks again for joining the show. This is a, both a podcast and a visual series. If you want to see the visuals, you can head over to YouTube and search for TBDK or Too Busy Didn't Know. You'll find it. There's no way you won't find it. I think I'm the only show with that name. And then otherwise, you can head over to Spotify, your favorite podcast player. Perhaps that's where you're listening to me right now. And you can listen to the show there in podcast form. So you might miss out on some of the visuals, which I'll try to describe here in the audio medium. Uh, and I thank you for your eyes and ears. And if you like what you hear, then hit that subscribe button and join me on finding out every week the coolest stuff around science, technology, business, and startup news. So I thank you for being here. But let's jump right into it with the news about the Event Horizon Telescope. So here we are at the Event Horizon Telescope, and it says it captured new images of a black hole with polarized light. Now, if you don't know the Event Horizon Telescope, commonly referred to as EHT, made a headlines two years ago with the announcement of the first direct image of a black hole, which is pretty neat. I mean, when I was a kid, I was terrified of black holes for some reason. I thought it was just going to rip open in the middle of our universe and swallow us up. I mean, I feel like scientists or the news media, the fear mongering news media has throughout you know, recent decades told us that a black hole could just swallow us up, us being Earth, uh, all of humankind, and just, you know, destroy us, rip us apart, uh, atom by atom, as that's what black holes do. They eat matter. The likelihood of that happening, I think, is eh, so small, but I swear as a kid, I was frightened that this was going to happen. So new pictures of black hole, uh, black holes from the EH. Two years ago, allowed scientists to kind of learn a little bit more about what exactly black holes are doing. And now, new images of the same black hole, <laughs> which might have come from my ex's heart, uh, this time showing how it looks in polarized light. And why that's important, uh, the polarized light, you may recall polarized light from uh, sunglasses. So in the same way that polarized sunglasses reduce glare from bright surfaces, the polarized light around a black hole provides a sharper view of the region around it, aka a sharper view of the black hole. In this case, the polarization of the light isn't due to special filters like in the sunglasses, but instead the presence of magnetic fields in the hot region of space surrounding the black hole of my ex's heart. The polarization enables astronomers to map the magnetic field lines around the inner edge to study the interaction between the matter flowing in and being blown outward. So not only is there the, I think it's even called the event horizon, the thing in the middle of the black hole. Not only is there the center, the event horizon of the black hole, which is consuming all matter, but there is also some sort of 
jettison outward of particles. I don't exactly know what it's shooting out, but it's also shooting out something from the middle of it. And scientists, I don't know if they completely understand exactly what it is. So if you're looking at this visually on the screen behind me, you can see the first image of the black hole taken by the Event Horizon Telescope two years ago. It looks almost like a really blurry lens flare, like a really blurry orange and red lens flare with the bottom having like a yellow half ring around it, almost like a really blurry bagel. Maybe, you know what, maybe this is just a really blurry bagel. It could also be a very blurry uh, eyeballs or like what an eyeball, like the iris looks like when you shine a light on it and you have your eyelid closed. It kind of looks like that. You know how it's like red and yellowy <laughs> as the light disperses through it. Uh, and the next picture we have here is an artist's impression of what the black hole at the center of the uh, elliptical galaxy M87 is, which is where we took the picture of this black hole. And it looks epic as fuck. Like it is a swirling mass of black holeness with this like smoke coming out from the middle of it. It looks, yeah, like an artist's rendering of something that you would see in a sci-fi movie or video game. And then next after that is this new picture of the black hole, the M87 supermassive black hole with the polarized light. And it kind of, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, resembles the artist's rendering uh, in the way that the, the ring around the center of this hole, where uh, you would think is the eye shining through the light, as I described earlier, has more detail in the light, in the yellow part underneath this, this uh, centered black circle. It has lines coming through it, like somebody was drawing hair almost. It almost looks like it has hair around it, I guess is the best way to describe it. I don't know. If you want to look at it visually, you'll definitely pick up what I'm seeing. But it doesn't look like it added much detail, just some lines. Uh, so it looks like the artist, <laughs> the telescope artist just got a little bit more lines uh, for this black hole with polarized light. What we're going to learn from it in the long run, I have no idea, but it's pretty cool that we're getting these hyper-resolution uh, images to help scientists study what exactly is going on. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about the James Webb Telescope, which is launching this October, which looks incredible. Uh, but for now, that was our story about black holes. Now, if we could just, you know, have all of our exes that have the black hole, although, you know... No, I'm not going to go down that route. You know, not going to go down that route talking about black holes. Yeah, I'm sure you all have an imagination and you can imagine exactly where my head was going. It involves uh, sexual activities. Black holes. Shh. Yeah, we're done with black holes. Next up is these nanobots. And I've been talking a lot about nanobots here on TBDK because they're starting to get... Con I guess what I would con say control of these nanobots that we can put inside of our bodies to deliver medicine or do some really precise like tumor, I guess you could call excisions or destruction from the inside out. And these scientists over in China have now developed a tiny robot that can get inside of mouse brains. And the reason why that's important is because we have this uh, blood brain barrier is what it's called, where the blood uh, goes through the, s the spine on your its way up to the brain. And there's like this barrier and only certain cell types can get through this blood barrier. So you do have particle like blood going into your brain. Obviously, you need oxygen to survive. So it, it, the blood has to get in. But it actually filters out a lot of different kinds of cells, uh, viruses and other stuff so that it doesn't get up into your brain. And there's a couple things that can penetrate that blood brain barrier, but uh, not not many things. And these Chinese scientists have now developed a way to get these nano robotics uh, from your blood stream into your brain, which is a big leap. And I believe what they're doing is coding these microscopic, these nanobots uh, in, that are in the mice's bloodstream they are coated in some sort of yeah jelly or something uh regardless they are being coated also in e coli which is bacteria and it has tricked the rodents immune systems into attacking them 
thus absorbing the robots and the cancer-fighting drugs in the process. The team's research was published in the Journal of Science Robotics. It comes on the heels of previous research from the same team, uh, which saw liquid-coated nanobots remotely propelled through the jelly-like fluid of the eye. Ah, that's what I was talking about. So they took these little nanobots and they put it in the jelly-like fluid of your eye. Um, this <laughs> article mentions that this sounds like an episode of the Magic School Bus, and maybe someday we'll be able to have a real episode of the Magic School Bus. We'll shrink ourselves down, or maybe we'll shrink a camera down, put it inside of us, and that'll be the next awesome Twitch stream from inside the body, Magic School Twitch, uh, where we get to see what's going on live inside of Justin Kahn's body. <laughs> Uh, this has obvious applications for all sorts of things and these little nanobots are controlled by magnets and so on micro scales we're talking about incremental movements of about 1% the width of a hair researchers were able to make the hybrid biobots uh, wind paths like in the video game snake uh, we can even see here on the screen the motion trajectory of these nanobots and so we can see it being moved almost yeah like the game snake so they went up over down over up over like in a square type pattern and now they just drew a star so we can see that they're controlling them pretty well if they're drawing these shapes and making them move like they're in the game snake uh, they're drawing square waves inside of someone's brain i guess that's what they're doing or maybe it's inside of someone's eye uh, it took them eight years to actualize these microscopic robot swarms capable of bridging the gap between the rodent bloodstream in the animal's tail, tail where they were injected and its brain where gliomas uh, which are tumors that emerge from the brain's glial cells resided part of the issue is that the mice's white blood cells didn't dig the flavor of the magne magne magnetic box to overcome that issue yeah as i mentioned they coated the bots in e coli which uh the white blood cells easily recognized as an unwelcome invader and that made the robots much more palatable and so the white blood cells enveloped them from inside the white blood cells the robots were then able to roll the cells towards the brain a trojan horse for the 21st century but in this case one that benefited the residents of troy or the brain of troy shout out to troy man shout out to my boy troy uh, the neurobots then made it into the brains and were able to deliver the drug fighting the glycoma or whatever it was called, the gliomas, uh, directly into the targeted tumors. You can see here the neurobot just looks like a gooey thing, uh, but somehow being controlled by magnetic pulls and the glioma right next to it. So they were able to fight it using their neurobots to targetly deliver the fluid right into the glioma and destroy the tumor pretty fucking rad if i'm gonna say so myself these nanobots are coming we're gonna have them uh these intelligent bots tiny bots that can travel inside of our bodies and destroy tumors and other diseases from the inside out Ugh, covid19 we're coming for you get out of here brain barrier nanobots done now we're taking it from our body to the skies up into the skies with two stories back to back one is about rhinoceroses. We all know that they're in danger. We all know that people are poaching them for their awesome epic horns. They're like real life unicorns, but they're fat unicorns. They're rhinoceroses being hunted down for their, their uh, horns, which apparently can be used in Chinese medicine. But researchers sometimes need to move these rhinos because apparently uh, there's not a lot of them left. And the males especially tend to mate with their uh offspring which is not what we want we want them to be mating with people uh, or with people with rhinoceroses uh, uh from a different family maybe even different species and so they got to airlift these guys over to new places and new pastures to then reproduce and they have to do this uh by taking them upside down if you can see it uh, behind me on the screen here they have tied a rhino with yeah with cloth around its feeties, little feeties, and they've hung it upside down from a helicopter. They've also blindfolded it probably to make it not freak out during the journey. Uh, I believe it's also sedated to hell with something that's like a 1000 times more potent than morphine. So these drugged out rhinos are tripping upside down as they're being flown across the, de the not the desert, the, the uh, uh, savanna of Africa. 
Uh, it's hilarious to see. You got to see it if uh, you're watching. The, if you're just listening to the podcast, you got to tune in visually to see these rhinos being hung upside down by their feet and flown all over the place. I wish they had a video of these rhinos uh, getting sedated and then getting airlifted by their toes, but we don't have it. We just have this awesome picture of a rhino flying through the sky with some green ties around its feet. Uh, and it might, on its way around the sky, pass by a mana bot, which is a drone doing deliveries. We've been hearing about drone deliveries, and they're coming down the pipeline very quickly. Samsung just secured a deal with a company called Mana, which is testing its new drones to deliver products in the United Kingdom. If I go over to the Mana website here, we can see this drone delivery as a service. Uh, this video here playing in the background right now, we see a family uh, hanging out and ordering something from Just Eat, the app. Uh, they order what seems to be some Thai food. Uh, the Thai guys are now cooking it. Of course, they had a, a, an actor that looked very Thai here, and they have ordered it. And now the, I guess, Mana drone. Oh, no, they pack it up into a box, which the drone can pick up. It has an... Uh, looks like a very hard cardboard box oh that they load themselves into the mana robot so that somebody has to load it into the mana bot and now we see the family being very bored and the wife uh, checks the app uh, she has a very thin nose uh, and nice sharp features and they have two handsome boys which are blonde and neither one of the parents are blonde and then they go outside and here comes the mana drone flying through the air. They're smiling at it like they don't know that it has a gun attached to it. And then from its cargo bay underneath it, it drops down on a string, the bot or the, the box with the Thai food. And now they are enjoying their Thai food as a family. The first thing that I thought of when I saw this was how the hell are they gonna approach that drone? How the hell is the drone gonna land and deliver its payload to these this family, which is clearly not put together by a casting agency, how are they going to approach this drone and keep their fingers intact? And what happened was that a trap door underneath the drone opened up and it just lowered down the box of Thai food on a string. It then had some sort of detachment mechanism to cut the string and then it dropped down and now the family can pick up the box and enjoy their Thai food. Pretty cool. I had no idea that we were coming this close to drone deliveries. Also, pretty weird. Uh, if we're all ordering stuff all the time from drones, are uh, like let, let's be honest, we're already space polluting. Now we're gonna air pollute. We're just gonna have all these drones flying around constantly, and it's gonna even be I don't. <laughs> just feels more like caste system, like some people have and some people have not. So there's gonna be the haves that have the ability to get the drones. And then there's going to be people that just can clearly not afford drone delivery. That's going to be like an extra 20 bucks on the delivery. There's no way it's only going to be five bucks to start. Maybe over time they'll reduce the costs. But yeah, drone deliveries are coming and they're just going to be dropping packages at your doorstep. I'm sure that somebody's going to hack these things uh, and add some sort of weapons or facial recognition or, or whatever they're going to do with these drones. Uh, but man, uh, uh, passing upside down rhinos in the air as they deliver your uh, Ethiopian food. <laughs> uh, drone delivery as a service coming to a place near you or if you're in the United Kingdom. It's already there, baby. Skies are never going to be the same. They're going to be littered with drones delivering uh, food. How cool. I don't know if it's cool. I, there's a part of me that knows it's cool and there's a part of me that's like, man... Uh, what are we doing? Just what are we doing? Next up though, let's take it uh, to another place here. Not in the sky, not inside our bodies, but in technology, in our phones, back to our phones. Robinhood, the stock trading app that went even more viral after the GameStop frenzy that happened uh, last month is filing for its IPO, its initial public offering very soon here. That is where a company lists on a open exchange stock market, in this case, the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE, and they make shares of their public, of their company public, so anybody can invest in them. And Robinhood is doing an interesting thing. They've got a lot of pushback for the way that they handled this GameStop fiasco. And they also get a lot of pushback from uh, political, not political, business commentators like Scott 
Scott Galloway about how they're gamifying the stock market. And he's not completely wrong about that at all. They definitely make it feel like it's something that you can win at uh, the stock market and that they gamify it with little animations and encouragements and also options trading on accounts that maybe shouldn't have options trading but regardless they're doing their ipo which means you listening to this right now can get in on their success and their growth uh, by buying their stock once they list on the stock market uh, but what they're doing is trying to set aside a couple of shares a couple thousand or million shares for users of their product to get into the action generally what happens excuse me generally what happens with these ipos is that they list on the stock market and only a select few of people have access to the stock at first who use high-end brokerages maybe or have special connections and they can buy in at a low price which then starts to make the stock go up so people like you and me who maybe don't have early access to these types of shares then have to pay a premium price for people who have already gotten their shares at a cheaper price and robin hood is saying no we don't want that we want our users to have the entry level price just like everybody else so they're setting aside a premium uh, set of shares just for their users to partake in their ipo at the initial offering the very initial offering which is generally 20 percent cheaper than it ends on the day for a good ipo for a good offering for a good first day gain so it's pretty cool and i believe the ones once they iron out the process they'll also allow other companies to do the exact same thing maybe this will help you know get some of the pushback uh, that they've been getting off the gamestop fiasco and the gamification of stock market trading off their back who knows if that'll actually happen or not robin hood are they still robbing the rich robbing from the rich and giving to the poor or are they just allowing the rich people to make even more money i'm definitely in the camp of gamifying uh things uh, is what they're doing and and that most people who are actually just in institutional uh traders are benefiting and not the small guy but i don't really know i don't follow robin hood anymore i used to use it to trade full disclosure but i'm not using it to trade anymore uh they are apparently part of the menace economy this is a step in the right direction become less of a menace if it works out who knows but just so you know if you are listening to this you can if you are a robin hood user get in on their ipo at the very initial offering price which is a big deal so we'll see how it goes i'm very curious uh this is a new wave of ipos uh coming through robin hood and i hope i do hope that other companies follow suit and offer these special shares to people uh especially users of their platform or if it's like you know uber or doordash or whoever these delivery platforms enabling their workers also to get in on that because that is really how you grow your wealth is through investing in the platform over time long-term growth that's it that's the secret i hate to break it to you so check it out get on robin hood uh, and in the meantime you can also start worrying about your sperm count yes dudes your sperm count maybe that's why you don't have any of those kids or maybe it's because you're making smart life decisions and not starting a family until you can handle it or if you have a kid congratulations i hear it's the biggest step into adulthood and will totally change your life not for joe i have not done that at all i have no kids at least none that i know of uh, besides the one that i leave in the garbage pan uh in, in inside the tissue but uh there's this woman shanna swan who is some sort of researcher that is saying that uh men are becoming less and less fertile that our sperm is dropping our little swimmers have given up swimming we've gone from michael phelps to the guy down the street that just wants to lounge around in the inner tube uh, and she's saying that uh, maybe the hardest number to avoid in her book that she just uh, wrote about sperm uh, is that sperm counts in the west have dropped by 50 percent and she doesn't mean to sound flip it but uh, should we be worried about being doomed and she says it's not a scientific word but let me tell you what i think i think that sperm counts are really low in many places in the world people should be very concerned yes she takes it seriously is she panicking no because her husband ain't shooting blanks. Ba ba ba. Actually, I have no idea what her husband's shooting. He could be shooting blanks. She blames it all, though, on uh, chemicals and higher amounts of stress. And uh, as a point of advice, because I don't want to leave you guys without, you know, with damaged sperm or with low sperm counts, that's not what I want for my listeners. I don't want you guys to have defective sperm. So, how can you increase your sperm health? Well, you can eat a Mediterranean diet. That's a diet that has fruits, vegetables, chicken, fish, 
and whole grains and that improves at least one if not more of your semen quality measures you're welcome get on that mediterranean diet you got to get that the, the fruits and vegetables I, I believe fruits are and vegetables are actually the biggest points here that she makes uh once or twice a week you got to get that fish in it also lowers your chances of cancer i believe if you get that fish in your system and in the meantime cut out the red meat go for the chicken learn how to cook some delicious juicy chicken and eat them whole grains you can't avoid grains altogether yes keto is popular and you can do it for a, a while for maybe even a couple months but then eventually you got to go back to them carbohydrates got to get them whole grains if you're mediterranean eat your greek food you got them pita bread if, you, if you're mediterranean and italian you got that pasta either way you're winning pita bread pasta all delicious embrace the mediterranean lifestyle and while you're at it have some olives i know a lot of people don't like olives but man olives are delicious get them a little cheese filled you got them green olives stuffed with cheese them pimentos and then you got them black olives black olive classic on pizza can't go wrong with some black leaves uh, so that's what you got to do mediterranean diet in order to save your sperm let me know in the comments if you've saved your sperm lately <laughs> getting into some more fun stories though back into space going back into space here on this next story nasa is launching launching their 10 billion dollar time machine is what they're calling it the james webb telescope now if you are watching on the video you can see the james webb telescope being brought into this room and it is a massive telescope it's got a huge mirror which is very important for a telescope and it seems to be made out of all gold it's like if awesome powers gold member was like make me a telescope it's gold i don't remember if that's how he's talked that might have been the worst impression of gold member ever but it's a massive gold mirror that looks like a giant honeycomb it's in the shape of a honeycomb that's the best way that i can describe it uh these hexagonal pieces all fit together uh, in this large yeah mirror that is made out of gold and it also seems like the room that it's in is all made out of gold maybe that's why it costs 10 billion dollars nasa is that you got all the scaffolding around it made out of gold don't know why that is the, the suits that they're wearing probably even have gold inlays maybe they're spending their money irrationally and 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 that's where this 10 billion dollar price tag is coming from you know nasa you gotta have that drip you gotta give them a shout out for having that drip though uh, we can see here <laughs> so stupid you know neil armstrong with the drip uh th that's why they were slapping the nasa logo and everything they had to fund the south that is the james webb telescope uh so yeah he, oh they're, they're talking about it now uh, if i jump into the video here that they had i'm going to try to move forward because i do remember seeing some cool stats about how big this thing is now we just have a lady talking uh, and some more artist renderings of the telescope it looks like it's part of a giant space sail and i believe they're jettisoning this like one billion light years away or something uh no incorrect <laughs> it's going uh one million miles away from earth which is pretty far let's be honest a, a million miles is pretty goddamn far uh it is leaving on halloween 2021 so later this year uh, if you want to look it up it's called the james webb telescope uh, as i mentioned here we can see the artist's rendering of it it'll unpack itself and it all fits together nicely we got three people talking about it they are referencing the rocket that is going to shoot it off it'll also fold itself up i guess if it needs to travel more uh, or it will fold itself up and then unfold once it gets a hundred mil uh the, the the hundred million miles away from earth uh yeah oh man i wish that i remembered the timestamp of the the size comparison because it showed i believe a size comparison to this telescope versus one of the uh, other ones and yeah it's this is the, if anything else if nothing else happens with this telescope it's got the drip man with that giant gold mirror so rad james webb tel uh, telescope give it a look up and look forward to its launch in uh october of this year bringing it back down to earth though we got boston dynamics launching their new 
robot if you're not aware of boston dynamics they make these very human like robots that you can kick and they won't fall over you can push them they won't fall over they're pretty much indestructible killing machines without weapons but if you throw some weapons on it they're just the terminator that's what these robots are and everyone always joked about them and now they have just unveiled their newest uh robot here which is called stretch i believe and i think they showed it in their dance video which i had on another uh, episode of tbdk and we can see here this robot that very aggressively is picking up boxes and moving them to the side it does not look gentle at all but maybe it's a little bit gentle and then out of the final box that it picked up it pulled out the other boston dynamics robot spot it's looking at it like what is this and then it places it down and spot goes do 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 uh, he does a little jog and then he he goes off in the distance but now that i'm seeing this it seems like boston dynamics real goal was to just replace warehouse workers so they don't want to build terminator bots but want to build worker bots inside of warehouses uh it looks kind of like i guess a scorpion tail that has a giant square on the bottom of it th with segway technology so that it doesn't fall over and these yeah it's demonstrating how accurate these stretch robot is it's rather tall it looks like if it would be fully extended it'd be at least 10 feet tall if i had to guess i mean the thing is pretty tall and it's just unpacking boxes so it has a big like suction cup thing on the end of it and it is now pulling its own conveyor belt into a shipping container and then unboxing um unpacking boxes on a shipping container it's also showing you the perception of uh, what it sees the stretch perception and yeah it's just grabbing boxes and on un and unloading them it's not in action super exciting but at the same time it's hella exciting to th see these robots doing their thing get a little bit close up of the gripper technology kind of looks like the james webb telescope pattern this hexagonal pattern of grippers uh, that the stretch robot is pulling off so there they go boston dynamics coming for your job in the warehouse if you are working in a warehouse it's going to be case handling very soon case handling unpacking whatever you want to call it you know murdering and destroying maiming humanity could also be what the goal is we don't know boston dynamics there they go again creating our destruction but don't worry because we'll be hiding out in the universe all our own called the metaverse using ar glasses and we got two stories about the metaverse if you've been listening to my show you know that i'm very excited about the metaverse niantic which is the developers of pokemon go shared some teaser images of ar glasses that's another entrant entrant into the ar glasses realm this is coming you guys cannot stop it stop it you guys and girls cannot stop it and everybody needs to be on this trend right now because it is in my opinion the next layer uh or the next big thing outside of the internet is these this layer of the web or this reality on top of our reality is going to blow everyone's minds i don't know how people aren't more excited about this and aren't paying more attention to it but niantic entering the race and uh more news from snapchat who has already made our glasses they have a new snapchat spectacle coming down the pipeline but more interestingly they also have invested in a company called zero zero robotics invested 20 million into this zero zero robotics company that in the past built a folding camera drone drone which went inside of it like a little case that you could carry around and then unfold and uh this drone would actually follow you around and take selfies it was like a selfie drone and so now snap is investing in these ar glasses and in an ar selfie drone to follow you around with facial recognition tracking uh, that you can probably see through the ar glasses i don't know exactly what snap is up to but there's a, another set of glasses so we got snapchat we got niantic we got apple we got facebook we have magic leap like these glasses are coming and there's no stopping them at this point and my throat just got so dry <coughs> dang excuse me oh dying over here Whew. so finally coming down the pipeline but before we can get to ar we have virtual reality if you're familiar with beat saber that's probably the breakout star of all of 
virtual reality and a new company is now putting VR goggles on cows in order to make them even more calm. I believe this Russian company uh, has now outfitted these VR goggles that can go on the heads of cows in order to make them more calm. They say that there has been a decline in milk production of these cows because they were, I guess, in high stress fields. <laughs> Come on, cows. You don't really have a stressful life. You don't have a job. Your job is to eat grass. That's your job, cow. You can do this. Make that milk. Get that milk so we can make that yogurt and that cheese. But pretty much they work with veterinarians to make this some sort of crazy depth perception thing for cows to, to relax them. And they say that after wearing the headsets, experts reported, you know, who are these experts? Quote experts, they don't tell us. Who are the cow experts, huh? Who are these VR cow experts? I don't believe they exist. Who these experts are, you can just say that. Yeah, cow experts uh, reported that the cows displayed a decrease in anxiety and an increase in general mood of the herd. Uh, and today the farm where these cows were outfitted with VR glasses now rank within the top three largest milk producers of the Russian Federation. Can we trust Russia about their cow producing VR glasses or their, their, their VR wearing cow milk production? I don't know. I got some skepticism around this, but the picture is hilarious. The cow is definitely chilling in VR. What the cow is seeing, I have no idea. They don't have it in the article. God, do I wish I could see what the cow is seeing, though. If it's seeing like some hot lady cow where it's just getting it all amped up, or if it's just like the serene field, this empty field, and the cows are just chilling. Uh, but then cow doesn't know VR right so it's got to be a little annoyed if it is chilling in a field and it can't eat the grass like if it's not actually in the field and it can't eat the grass I wonder what it's seeing or if it's passed through VR where it's actually more like augmented reality I don't know but apparently farmers if you're watching this which I know I got a lot of dairy farmers who watch this you got to put VR glasses on your cows to increase your milk production Wisconsin where I'm from home of the cows, the happiest cows in all of the United States. You got to get on VR glasses for your milk production. And then, <laughs> yeah, just, man, it's such a funny image seeing a cow with the VR glasses on and imagining them playing Beat Saber. That's got to be what's playing, right? Beat Saber. Uh, and the last story here uh, is these, these uh, injected prototyped 5G energy harvesting things. So these these scientists over at Georgia Tech University just announced the world's first a 3D printed rectifying, 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 hit. This is going where? No, a 3D printed rectifying antenna the size of a playing card that can harvest electromagnetic energy from 5G signals and use it to power the devices, turning 5G networks into wireless power grids. This is not going to do anything to calm the skepticism about 5G causing tumors or mind controlling people. But what I can tell you is this is fucking rad. They have taken, I believe, 3D printed, yeah, 3D printed circuitry on a, on a card that's the size of a playing card which could then be put inside of a tablet or a phone that harvests energy from thin air from 5G networks, meaning when you're walking around, if you got 5G networks nearby, if you got these 5G uh, transponders or whatever they're called, the transformers, the, yeah, Optimus Prime nearby shooting out 5G uh, waves, you can actually harvest electromagnetic energy and charge your devices so we can finally walk around and not worry about draining our battery because the 5G uh, the, the pr signal provider, the 5G antenna, is actually charging our devices. This is insanity to me, but it's so cool. It's a device that helps uh, hopefully increase the life of a smartphone's battery by 30% by just harvesting some of the radio waves the phone itself is generating. That is very, very, very cool. 5G has been designed for blazing fast and low latency communications. Uh, however, to do so, the, the millimeter wave frequencies were adopted to allow unprecedentedly unpre high radiated power densities by the FCC. Unknowingly, the architects of 5G have thereby created a wireless power grid capable of powering devices at ranges far exceeding the capabilities of any existing technologies. The team solved the riddle of using something called a Rotman's lens 
a spiky looking plate in the middle of the card. Rotman lenses are handy in the range of millimeter wave applications as a beam forming tool, effectively turning a single large high grain narrow antenna uh, beam into a series of simultaneous antenna beams covering a much wider angle. I don't know, there's a lot of big words in there, a lot of sciency type words. Antenna, narrow angle, single. multiple directions all these words that i'm not really sure how they fit together and how it's working but what they've done is made an energy harvesting device that can go on our phones and actually charge our phones or our devices maybe even our laptops as we walk around uh, just from the air from getting the signal from the 5g which then allows us to do awesome augmented reality things or play cloud based games like angry birds you know angry birds coming back with that 5g gaming yeah, I gotta gotta beat up the pigs. They're they're gonna be in VR now with the, with with the cows. So yeah, energy harvesting device from Georgia Tech. Pretty rad technology. Uh, I think it's very cool. I probably said rad too many times. Uh, if somebody understands this technology, let us know in the comments below because I actually don't understand how this is working or what the hell a Rotman lens is. It's not Dennis Rotman. It's R O T M A N, not Rodman, which would be a totally different lens. It's a little bit wacky and has green hair. Uh, but if you understand it, let us know in the comments what exactly Rotman's lens is. And that's it. Too busy, didn't know for this week. Uh, if you enjoy my content, hit the subscribe button and support me. If you're listening on a podcast, you can open open up the show notes and subscribe to the show on Anchor. It comes out every Wednesday. Otherwise, you can head over to the TBDK YouTube channel and subscribe there and help support me in different ways uh, through the YouTube channel. I guess if you tell a friend to subscribe to me too, I can get that ad money, money finally. It's taken me way too long to get monetized on YouTube. All that aside, thank you for uh, paying attention to he my my show here on the go sh the, from the Go Go Joe show. Uh, this is on a new network now, so I'm trying to to get that all uh, all squared away. But yeah, uh, if you got cool stories, you can also send them to me hi Joe show at gmail.com. Until next week, I hope you learned something good because you know it. I love you.